All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Bible study. I pray everybody has been having a wonderful, blessed weekend as we thank the Most High for so much. My title now says, Evil Spirits Always Look for Somewhere Else to Go. Evil Spirits, they always searching, looking for somewhere else to go. Another body to jump in. When you see these horror movies, these demonic films, or we could say TV shows, you know, somebody always cutting on themselves, hollering and screaming and yelling and they bleed or they being put in chains in some kind of dark room. They talking crazy to themselves. And then somebody always trying to give them some kind of shot or pills. We can just say medicine to try to calm them down. And notice that the medicine, it never can cure them because pills, drugs, shots don't stop a demonic spirit. The only way to overcome demonic spirit is through the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit, let me say it like that. Um, as the most I laid this heavy on my spirit, um, I was led to do this video by um, what I was saying in my last video. And I, I just love how we don't want a card on there and how the most ties just always let me know what to say next. But the Holy Spirit is what drives out evil spirits, y'all. And we have to understand that because in the last video, I made a statement saying we have to put on the whole armor of the most high. And there is no way you can put on the whole armor of the most high when you stuck on all this technology. The technology has gotten the best of you, teach Holy Spirit. Your weapons in so many ways done been snatched away from you. They done been replaced. And these weapons I'm talking about, I'm not talking about your guns, your knives. I'm talking about your spiritual weapons. Because if you're spending all your time, teach Holy Spirit, Facebooking, Instagramming, if all your time is in the technology, there is no way you have time to focus on the most high. The prince of the power of the earth got you. So what I'm about to do now is go back to a serious passage in the Bible. We have taught on this before, but Holy Spirit led me back to it once again. I'm going back to a familiar passage we all probably are familiar with. Demons. Legion. For we are many. I'm going back to Mark chapter 5. And we're going to be dealing with verses 1 through 20. If you want to grab your Bible or if you want to just listen along. I have the scriptures up here, you know, in the corner right here. But once again, this is Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Now, if you ever look at some of these shows now, look at the names of them. These TV shows. You see them called Lucifer. You see them called Legion. Even on Empire, they're using, what is that, Club Leviticus. These are not just TV shows, y'all. These are not just movies. I tell you all the time, the Prince of the Power of the Earth, he moves through all forms of communication. It's more to these shows than what you think. But we'll, we'll deal with that later on. Let's go to Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. This was right after uh, my Savior come to storm on a boat when he was with the disciples back in Mark 4. So right after he get off the boat, so let's look at verse 1, and it says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gardens. This is what our Savior and his disciples, they crossed the lake. They crossed Lake Galilee, and they came to the shore. So verse 2 says, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the, the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So right when he was getting off the boat, our Savior, here come this man, as the Bible say, unclean spirit. He ran quickly to our Savior. 
See, even demons, here we go, they know who our Savior is. Even demons, they believe. And y'all wonder why I say it's more than just believing. Some people say, well, all you got to do is just believe. And that's it, brother. Boy, it's way more than just believing. You better start knowing. You better start activating. You better start doing. Because these demons know when the Holy Spirit is present. And they can't do nothing but flee or beg to be thrown somewhere else when the Holy Spirit shows up. That's why when you are a child of the king, every time these these demonic, these demonic, uh, these evil spirits come up on you, every time the Holy Spirit would drive them out. But you can't drive out the demonic spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit, can you? Look at verse 3. Who had his dwelling among the tombs? And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Excuse me, not chains, but chains. In other words, verse 3, look at this. Who had, who had his dwelling among the tombs? This man was living in the graveyard. Nobody could control him. This man was strong. He was demonic. He was breaking the chains. He was cutting himself. Nobody was able to tie this man down, not even with a chain, y'all. This is why, once again, you cannot fight evil by yourself. See, nowadays, they would have called this man schizophrenia. He's psychotic in the mind. or he, he's, he's bipolar. He's this. He's that. I'm going to tell you what the Bible called it evil spirits, unclean spirits. See, the world going to always give you their definition on what they think something is when it's all in the word of the Most High. He ain't psychotic. <laughs> it's demonic spirits. She ain't schizophrenia. It's unclean spirits. Let me leave that alone. Verse 4 says, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Once again, it says, neither could any man tame him. You couldn't even chain this man down. Didn't nobody want to go near this man because the power of him. Verse 5 says, in all ways, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying, and cutting himself with stones. He, was just, he wasn't just doing this at night. He did this night and day. Night and day. These demons had the best of this man. See, when you get in control that hard, night and day, and ain't no telling how many evil spirits was in this man. It's not a number put on this. This go to show you a person can have way more than one spirit inside of them. Verse 6 says, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now let me ask y'all a question. It's not a trick question. How can you worship with demons in you? How can you have all that demonic activity going on and then all of a sudden well, I see Jesus, and you run and worship. How can you be full of demons and go from that to knowing who Jesus is? I can't wait to see y'all comments, y'all answer. Let's move on to verse 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I Adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. This man pretty much shouted out, Jesus, Son of God in heaven, what do you want with me? Promise me, please, that you won't, to you won't torture me. Please don't torture me. Verse 8 says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. 
I love this part. Come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. And verse 9 says, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. We are many. My name is Legion. That's why it makes me think of it, about these movies. Once again, you see people grinding, grinding, and cutting on themselves, and they talking to somebody else. That's them demons. I see people all the time on the block, man. They they sitting down, ain't nobody else there, but they talking loud and crazy and cussing, and they not even in their right mind. That's what was going on with this man. For we are many. My name is Legion. We are many. But notice once again in verse 8, the Bible said that, the, that our Savior told them, them unclean spirits, spirits to come out of this man. In verse 10 it says, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now, we get into my title of this video. Especially when you look at verse 10, 11, and 12 all together. Now look at this. Verse 11 says, Now there was there not unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. So here go this large herd of pigs. And verse 12 says, And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Now, what my title say once again, evil spirits, they always looking for somewhere else to go. That's why you can't kill the you can't kill the evil spirit, but the evil spirit can be tortured. You sure can't kill the Holy Spirit. It's forever. But these evil spirits can be tortured. And I love that. I love the fact that they recognize the Holy Spirit, and they know better than to, than to try to go up against the Holy Spirit, so they ask to go somewhere else. Mm. Demons always are looking for a fleshly body. You know what I'm saying? They, they could even be looking for an animal to get in. That's why you have to always, when you're looking at your family members and people that's demonic, demonic, excuse me, church folks, yeah, I said it, all kind of people, when you see them, it's not them, it's what's inside of them. Because once again, this battle is not against flesh and blood. Once they allow those demons to get the best of them, they in bad shape. Demons will use whatever they can. And most people out here that I know don't even think that these devils are real. They don't think these demons are real. They think they just look, well, it's just a movie. Well, that, you know, that was just on TV. And they wonder, man, I had, a, I had a bad nightmare. And they wonder why that person that they thought they would, or who, whoever it was they saw in their dream, they thought they were talking to their mama that died years ago. They was talking to a familiar spirit. That, that oh, that's, that, I know that was my mama. No, that wasn't your mama. That was a familiar spirit. That wasn't your brother. That was a familiar spirit. That's why you don't suppose to contact the dead. I get people all the time, JT, it was some in my room last night. Man, I'm telling you, man, I, I took off running. JT, something messed with me in my sleep. It was sexual. I know what you're talking about. Been there, done that. That's why you have to be prayed up. Prayed up, especially before you go to sleep. Because when you go into sleep, that's when your body is ready, really ready to rest. And that's when demons really are ready to attack very hard in your sleep. Y'all remember I did that video about incubus and succubus? A lot of people laughed at that video. And then later on, them same ones were laughing, were wondering what was going on with their body while they were asleep, while they was getting attacked in their sleep. This ain't nothing to, to play around with, y'all. These demons out here are real. And if you're not careful and have on this armor with the Holy Spirit, they will take you out. Verse 13, let me move on. 
It says, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. They ran violently. Hmm. That's something about that just stuck out to me. They ran violently down a steep place into the sea. About 2,000. Mm. And then the Bible say were choked in the sea. These evil spirits, they went out of the man and into the pigs. They, they, would, rather, they would rather run down, <laughs> jump, pretty much drown themselves than to deal with the Holy Spirit. And what I say, you can't, you can't kill them. <laughs> they just gonna go somewhere else. But these demons know they are no match for the most time at all. Verse 14 says, And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. So here it is. The men out there that was taking care of the pigs, they ran to town and they they went to the farms to spread the news. Hey, y'all, y'all got to come see this, man. They had to come out to see what actually had happened because everybody knew this man was full of demons. And it's the same man that was loud and cutting on himself. Nobody could control him, tame him. Look at verse 15. It says, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And then look at what the Bible said in verse 15. They was afraid. See, when you see something like that, you know how demonic a person was, how evil they were. Then all of a sudden, wait a minute. This brother, in his, he clothed in his right mind now. Wait a minute. Say, we, we need, whoever did this, we need to get him up out of here. This can't be real. Verse 16 says, And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. In other words, everybody who had seen what had happened told about the man and the pigs. This was the talk of the town now. This was this was big talk now. And look at verse 17 says, And they began to pray him to depart out of, out of their coast. These people, in other words, when they saw our Savior, they started begging him, you know what? We need you to leave this part out. We need, we need you to get out this part of the country. You got to go. But look at verse 18 says, And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. So the man that had the evil spirits, when he saw our Savior getting back on the boat, he begged our, he begged our Savior, Can I go with you? Let me come with you. I know if that had been me, I've been wanting to, let me say, let me roll with you. Man, you just did something to me that no man could do. No man could get these demons out of me. Even though, you know, our Jesus was in the flesh. But we understand who our Savior really is and the power of the Holy Spirit. He wanted to go with our Savior after that. Verse 19 says, but look at what our Savior told him. I bet Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and had compassion on thee. In other words, no, don't come with me. Go tell your friends. Go back home. Tell the good news. Tell the gospel. And all you had to do was look at that man to see how he was and then look at, to, look at what he was converted to. He was clean now. Verse 20 says, And he departed and began to publish 
in, De in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. See, this is what I call a powerful testimony when you plead in the blood. This is a show enough testimony. This this man had so many demons in him. He could have died. He could have killed himself. But look at the power of the Holy Spirit. See, it's something to point out right here. It's so many people are so quick to tell you about how good their church service is. You got to come to our church, man. Please, we have a family day. You know, we got a dynamic choir, our musician staff. It's awesome. The pastor, he, man, he can preach. We this, we that. Not once have they told about the Holy Spirit, our Savior. Who is really, and I'm not, I'm not talking about everybody like this, but who is really telling the lost and telling sinners about Jesus? What he done for you? What he done for me? See, we're so quick to put emphasis on a building that we're not putting them same emphasis on the Holy Spirit. It's not about the building. We will build a body of Christ up more and more if we would tell people about Christ. Now, as I close, keep this in mind. Be careful what you're watching. Be careful what you're doing in your phone. Be careful what you're letting your children watch and what your children are listening to. Because don't think for one second these demons won't mess with your child. They're doing it every day. One thing about these demons, they know what to do, they know when to do it, and they know how to do it. Pray over your house. Stop waiting, just waiting on Sunday morning to do everything when these demons are attacking all week long. You got to put on the full armor once again. So y'all, that's Mark chapter 5, verses um, one, verses 1 through 20. May the most high have a bless, add a blessing to the readers the hearers and the doers of his holy word. I'm going to close out now. Um, gracious most high, we just come now giving you all the honor, the glory, and all the praise and worship. Thanking you for your word, your love, and your protection all around us. Protecting us from things we don't even see on a daily basis coming our way. Things we don't even know about you protecting us. And Father, I just pray that most lost people, more and more lost, shall come unto you. As we are disciples following you, we are servants. I pray that even in some of these church buildings, that most of these, these church folks get that Holy Spirit. And they can cast away them legions, them demons, for we are many, by keeping on the whole armor. Thank you, Father. We love you. We adore you. And let your will be done. Only your will be done. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And let the church say amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day.